Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast with Michelle Chalfont, a place to delve into who we are, how we got that way, and explore what it takes to be a healthy grown up. With an extensive toolbox and guests with varied expertise, Michelle will lead us on a journey to learn what it's like to live authentically and to love ourselves just the way we are. And now, here's Michelle. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. I am Michelle Shelfon. Always so happy to be here with you. And today is podcast number, I feel like I need a drum roll here, podcast number 199. How about that? And this lovely February 27th, we are at podcast number 199. For those of you that are new to the show, you can find out all about the adult chair at theadultchair.com. And I thank you all for joining me. And always a big thank you to everybody that shares the show, leaves reviews. I love all of you guys. Thank you so, so much. I really do read all of them, so I appreciate it. Today, I have such a great show. I am thrilled to have a show on dating from the adult chair. What happened was I was in an in-depth conversation with someone that I know very well about dating, and she was asking me all kinds of questions about how you date in a healthy way, how you date from your adult chair. And I said, you know what? I'm recording (laughs) because these are such great questions. This needs to be shared. I mean, we talked all about, you know, how do you know that you are picking the right partner, control issues and dating. Some of us, you know, we have that. Divorce and dating, love addiction, love avoidance. We touched on that a little bit. And how do you tell if you have fallen too hard? Is it really love or is it lust? And what do you do? And how do you do dating in a healthy way is the biggest takeaway. So we had such a great conversation. I really, really feel like you guys are going to enjoy this show. If you are in a relationship or starting a relationship or even if you are not in a relationship, they're just really, really great ideas that will help you if you want to do relationships from the adult chair. So I want to remind you, this is the last three days. If you're interested, come one, come all to the adult chair workshop in Nashville, Tennessee, April 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. It is not just open to people that want to do this certification. It's open to anybody that would like to come. I've had a few questions about that. This is open to anybody. And if you want information on that, remember, these are the last three days to get $100 off um, on March 1st. That price goes back up. So go to theadultchair.com forward slash events. And if you are interested in becoming an adult chair certified coach, that registration period ends March 15th. So if you want information on that, that would be at theadultchair.com forward slash certification. So here we go with an awesome conversation that I had with my friend Jackie, all about dating from the adult chair. All right. So I'm sitting here with my friend Jackie and she is, would you say on the dating scene, in the dating scene? How do you say that? Sure. <laughs> we'll call it that. Okay. And, I'm and checking it out. You're checking it out. And she's asking me some really good questions about dating and how do you know who the right one is? And she has some really good questions. And I said, you know what? Let's record this. This, this would actually be a great conversation for the podcast because I know a lot of people have, have written in and I've seen on social media, they've asked me the same questions you were asking me. So thanks for joining me, Jackie. Of course. Yeah. So talk to me. What were, so you're new to the dating scene. Yes. You had, a, you had a few really good questions. So go back to your questions. I think my first question is, how do you know that you're picking the right partner? Because I think it's so easy to get caught up in the moment, get caught up in the intensity and the physical attraction and just this immediate connection. But how do you know that it's the right partner. Because what if it's just this immediate thing that quickly burns away as well? Right. Actually, here's some control there. I'm just saying. (laughs) (laughs) Probably true. Probably true. (laughs) I hear some control because I'm hearing you say, you know, you don't want to make a mistake. You want to make sure you're picking the right one. 
and your emotions are carrying you away a little bit and you don't know if he's the right one or not the right one. So you want to make sure before you really commit. Can we tell just a hair of your backstory, which is just a little bit of your backstory, which is like you are divorced yes. and just kind of, you you just started back in the dating scene. And you said to me, actually, you've, you've been on like just a couple dates and then you met this guy and you're really, you really have a strong connection with him physically, emotionally. You're on the phone with him like for hours at a time at night and you're wondering, and it's only been just a few weeks and you're wondering, you know, if you should date other people. Yeah. No, that, I think that's it. It's how can I go from such being in a marriage to just kind of dabbling in it a little bit to all of a sudden that like this one particular person it's so intense with, but I don't, you know, it, it's only been short, a short period of time. So can you really know someone that well? I, I don't want to get so far down the line and realize we don't align in certain areas. So how, how can I ensure that I'm not just so into this because, you know, it's, it's fun in the beginning? Yeah. Well, there are a couple things I want to say about that. Number one, you, you've asked me this many times, like, is it bad to jump in and start dating someone exclusively if you're out of a divorce just a few months? And I don't know, this is my personal opinion. I don't feel like we can turn on and off our emotions. So if you're really into this guy, how in the world are you going to date someone else? Like, I can't even imagine you dating someone else the way you feel about this guy. Like, you're so... I try. <laughs> I know. And you're trying, you're saying, well, I need to date other people. I'm like, why are you doing that? Now, let me preface it and say this. If you are, I don't, and, and I know you, I know you're not desperate. Mm -hmm. I know you're not picking the first one that comes along. I know you're not grasping at straws. You're very centered. You're very balanced. You're thoughtful, meaning you're thinking through things. You're feeling through things. So that's number one. Like there are some women that I would say, or men, whomever, hold on, slow down. This is a love addiction. And I don't hear that. Like, I don't hear you going into fantasy. You know, the love addiction, you would, I would, people go right into fantasy and I'm going to marry him. I don't hear you saying that. You're even just questioning if you should date him and not date someone else. So I just want to say that because there are some people I would say, you need to go date other people because you are in fantasy. And that's one of the key things that we hear with love addiction. I don't hear that from you at all. I almost hear a little bit of love avoidance because <laughs> you're like, I'm just going to push him away. So I, I go, I push and I pull. It's yeah. kind of that. Well, I and I, I think you're pushing away because you're scared because you had this idea in your mind that you need to date. And again, this is the con the control stuff that I was telling you about. <laughs> you have slight control issues, I just do, saying. I um, and you know, I love you, but it's true. And it's like, I, I you know, I'm, I, you know, I got a divorce and then you're supposed to date for, you know, 1.2 years and then you may meet someone and then you, I don't know what your parameters were, but I think <laughs> knowing you, you probably had that in your mind. Like this is what it needs to look like post-divorce. I need to date, date off and on different men. And then around this time, you know, after this many months, then I can get married or get serious even. And you're not even talking about marriage. You're just talking about getting serious. So too controlling in my opinion, um, go with it. If you're not in this active love addiction, it's like just explore it. Like, I don't believe we can turn our feelings on and off so quickly. Like, how in the world are you going to turn your feelings off with this guy? Like, do you even think that's possible? <laughs> nope. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. I think it's more so, you're probably right, that there's such this like stigma, this whatever out there that everyone says, you should be divorced exactly one year before you get into another relationship. You need to date around because you need to figure out who is right for you. And maybe there's a little bit of fear that comes in as well, because yes, I, you know, I thought this person that I married was exactly who I wanted and who I wanted to be with. Well, now I'm doubting myself and saying, oh my gosh, I was wrong. So do I need to refigure out who I am and who I want? Even though I have this strong connection with this person, I think there's a little bit of a hesitation. So it's kind of like, how do I how do I know if they're the right? Like, do I need to be making a list? Do I just go with the flow? You know, I think there is some like fear of being hurt again. Yeah. If you, you know, with it going so strong, I don't know. But there's definitely a lot of, there's definitely people out there that say it should be this amount of time. Like everything is very structured with it. 
But I think those are general rules to follow. And and you, it's sort of like, you know, it reminds me of like raising children. It's like the, the books are all out there on how to raise babies or how do you get through the, 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 the crib stage, right? Like mm-hmm. how do you get babies to sleep through the night? Every baby's different. So I think every person is different. You really have to look. So those are great guidelines. Again, I don't feel like jumping in from one relationship to another is a good idea. However, let's look, you have to look at the relationship that you came out of. If you are head over heels with your husband and, and you got a divorce, you didn't want the divorce, and this is the first man that you've met and it's only been a few months and you're clinging to him like a vine because you don't want to be alone, that's a completely different story than what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You have been, gosh, like you probably knew for the last two plus years that you were ready to leave your husband, right? right I mean, right. let's face it. You've been grieved. You've grieved. You've gone through all the steps of grief from the end of this marriage, right? For years, mm-hmm. even though you just got a divorce a few months ago. It's it was longer. over. Yeah, truly. It's been so you have to consider so many different things. If someone, again, and this is where I go back to like, you got to sit in your adult chair. Where are you coming from with this relationship? Are you centered? Are you in balance? Are you losing yourself? Do you go into fantasy? Are you pushing away and you should be more in balance? I should, you know, so like with, again, I'm just making very, very general statements here, but the love addict goes into fantasy, gets very anxious. When that person is around, they reach, reach, reach. They don't want to be alone. You know, that's the love addict. The love avoidant is more of pushing away. Um, they might want closeness. And then when that person gets a little bit too close, then there's that push away. There's this, what they're doing is they're creating a safe distance. That's not healthy either. So my recommendation is always slow down. <laughs> if you're in doubt, and I hear you're in doubt, no matter what I feel, You've got to slow down and get clear on where you are. Are you in balance? We need to enter into any relationship from a place of balance. And when we have found someone that we're head over heels in love with, we go into that, oh my gosh, you know, and we lose ourselves. We just do. You know, it's the first nine nine months is that honeymoon phase. We don't see any of their negative qualities. We let them all go. We fall hard and we lose ourselves. I don't think that that's a great idea. But we need to instead stay in balance and yes, feel in love and yes, fall in love and have fun with all that. But when you feel yourself disconnect from you and you're not picking up on the red flags, that's a problem. I hear from people all the time that say, yeah, you know, I got married and, you know, we're not doing well now. When did you first see it? Well, I saw it when we were dating, but I just kind of blew it off. Mm -hmm. I really feel like if we sit in the adult chair and we're present and we stay connected to ourselves and we slow everything down, really slow it down, then we might, no, there's no for sure, of course, Mm -hmm. but catch the red flags. You know, you were in a relationship that was not healthy and someone that had an addiction and I don't, you know, and I feel like you've worked through whatever emotions you had, the guilt, the grief, the whatever, the regret, did I make a mistake, all of that stuff. I feel like you have. So if you feel clean with that, then are, you should ask yourself this question. If you're someone that's that's entering in a, in a new relationship, am I coming into this new relationship from a place of balance or am I coming into it from a place of reaching or avoidance, et cetera? Does that make so sense? It does. So kind of the things that I need to focus on, one, I think regardless coming out of a relationship or not, you know, are you ready for that? Are you, it sounds like what you're saying, are you balanced? Are everything about you, are you okay? Are you in a good place to enter into a relationship? Number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, be aware, slow down, look for red flags, anything like that. Yeah, I would say be open to. I mean, I don't think we have to like turn every stone over looking, 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 mm-hmm. but don't intentionally go looking for. Yeah. Signs. I mean, we want to be, be aware. aware. Yes. Awareness is key. Like, huh, that's interesting. He really drank a lot. Or why did he come? You know, I had a, I had a client that said it really concerned me when she'd met some guy like on match.com or something and he wanted to Uber to the restaurant. Because he wanted to drink and not just have mm-hmm. one, he had like seven, yeah. <laughs> you know. Not and a good she, sign. she's like, This was our first date. And I said, Oh, ouch, how did that feel to you? And she said, 
that felt really bad. I mean, that's like an, a blatant red flag. Yeah. And I said, you know, on your first date, if you've got to go and get that drunk, that's a red flag. I mean, you want to be aware of what you're doing if you're on your first date. So anyway, so I wouldn't say look for red flags, but be, be aware, be really aware of them. Don't turn a blind eye on them, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people do that and they blow it off and they go, oh, it was no big deal. Oh, whatever about that. He got a little drunk or, or whatever it is, you know, oh, we didn't have the best conversation, but you know, he's really good looking or she's this, or they've got a good job or they'd be a good mom or a good dad or, you know, whatever you're looking for, we, it's like, we want to mold that person into what our, what our idea is of that perfect, you know, partner. So should I, if I have like an idea in mind of where, (laughs) if I have an idea in mind of where I want to be, like what my life looks like, what my ideal partner looks like, should I let that go? And just whoever I connect with, I connect with, or is it a good idea to be looking for that type of person? And that would be a red flag. Like if this person, I'm like, you know what, this is where I, this is what I'd like my life to look like. Mm -hmm. And if this person isn't aligned with that, is that a red flag? Can you give me some examples? Because again, I don't feel like we can turn our heart off. I mean, we, we, you're going to have a, yes. you know how you have a, if you have chemistry with someone, you have chemistry. So maybe you want a guy that's six feet tall and this guy is like, you know, five, seven. And, yeah. and, and you may look at him and be out with him and be like, God, I have so much chemistry, but I'm writing him off because I only date men that are six feet tall. It's like, no, let's hold on a second. Let's go with your heart. Like, how does he make so you feel? It kind of depends on like what, how important that piece of it is in your life. Yes, for sure. So, but give me some examples of what you were talking about. You know, whether it may be that, hey, and not that this is what I want, but, you know, someone may have in mind that like, I would love to get married and have a family and be a stay-at-home mom in three years versus with this person. It's like, oh, you know, that may be a different lifestyle. Um, Maybe I can't, maybe that's not a path I could go down. Or um, maybe I would like to live in Nashville the rest of my life. Like my family's there. I love it. Um, I can just envision living in this neighborhood, white picket fence. Well, this person may be in the military and they move around a lot and we could be moving every three years. You know, where where is that kind of line of you say, is this something I really want? How mm-hmm. do I need to step? Like, what can I do to step back and really figure out what I want, like what's important. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. And I think that only you know, again, Mm -hmm. like, is it a deal killer if, you know, I meet someone in the military and they're, and I know for sure they're going to move around and I'm not going to be able to live close to my family. That's only, you know, the answer to that. Like, is that a deal breaker or not? And if it is, then you're going to want to consider like, maybe I shouldn't date this person. You know, may, maybe that if that's a deal breaker, then. Eh. But is it, is it a control issue if I have a list? <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to make a list of like absolutes and would likes? <laughs> yes, I think that'd be a great idea. Actually, can I bring it to on my first date <laughs> <laughs> and see if they if they check all the boxes? Yes, but again. There are some things, like if you absolutely don't want to live, let's say, far from like your parents and your siblings, Mm -hmm. if that is something that is so important to you and this person travels with sales, is in the military or has to move to Europe, you know, in two years and you're going to be gone, gone, that might mean that maybe he's not the right one. But again, I don't know that you can turn those feelings off in your heart. I just, I, I I don't know about that. But but again, if it's going to lead to fighting later on, like I never wanted to leave my family, you got to get clear on that. I mean, I'm I'm absolutely amazed. I'm amazed to sit and talk to people that are married, that like recently, like in the last within let's say you know zero to five years, that come in and they're arguing because they never talked about it when they were dating if they wanted kids, and then they get married and they realize like well, I didn't know you didn't want kids. I do want kids. And now it's this huge issue. So for sure, again, from the adult chair, can we please talk about like, 
everything and anything. If you are getting married or moving for someone, even if you're not going to get married, but you're moving, let's say, to another town or or state or country, for God's sake, like talk it through. Put all of your cards out on the table. And some people say, well, I don't want to put too much out there. I don't want to scare them away. If putting your cards on the table is going to scare them away, guess what? They're not for you. They're not for you. Like you got to put it out there, put everything out there. And if they don't want you anymore, then see you later. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree. I think there's there's a fine line of when you put it out there, but I, you know, there's, it also has to happen kind of in the flow. I know you talked a lot about of just like kind of naturally letting things happen, letting go of control and things like that. And with the the individual that I started dating, I wasn't going to put my divorce out there on the first date but something in the moment felt right to let it, to put it out there. And it was kind of this, I'm going to put it out there. And if, if it's not going to work, it's not going to work and it's okay. Look who let go of her control. (laughs) For (laughs) one one night. (laughs) I'm so proud of you right now. Yes. But I do think that's important. It's like, put it out there. Like, you know, I think that when we're dating in our twenties, it's much different than when, when we're dating in our 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s. It's like, mm-hmm. as we age, it's like we don't need to date for like seven years before we find the person that we're going to marry. And maybe you don't ever want to get married, but do you want to commit to this person? If you don't know in a few years and you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, like, well, come on, mm-hmm. honey, you know, it might be time to move on. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, very- you just know. And if you're still wondering after all these years, and again, maybe you're more... more excuse me, maybe you're working through love avoidant. Maybe you've got some attachment stuff going on. That's a little different or, or, or love addiction and whatever it is. But if you don't really know in your heart after a few years, yeah, like, honey, move on. Agree. You know, don't stay with someone. Again, it's, it's everyone's choice. I'm not telling people, to, you know, this is what you should do. Just to be comfortable. Like if you're sitting here wanting something more, wanting a deeper connection, but there's fear. That's a whole other issue to sit with fear, you know, and, uh, and work through that fear. So how do you, how do you tell the difference between fear that you can work like with fear versus like love, the love avoidant type of, is, is there like a fine line with that? Or can you talk a little bit more on, talk a little bit more about the love addiction, love avoidant type of, I think I have fear that I'm moving into that but is it really that? Or do I just need to let go? And it's more of my control coming in. Yeah. And I think that when we are controlling, we fear if if control is one of our main things, you know, and and I think everybody has control, honestly, like it's just part of who we are, but some people have a lot more control than others. And when we are in a committed relationship or just a relationship, the way that we go deeper in that relationship and feel more connected is to become or be more vulnerable in that relationship, which means I'm letting go of control. So there is that fine line between control and love avoidant. Like love love avoidance are so afraid that they're going to lose themselves completely Mm -hmm. and get enmeshed or get taken over, you know, and lose who they are when they're in relationship with someone else. So there's a fear of that. So there's that pullback. Oh my gosh, I don't want to go in too much. You know, I don't want to lose myself as well as, you know, I'm a little afraid I'm going to lose control. Let me just pull back. I'm I'm afraid to lose myself. So does that make sense? That makes total sense. It's it's more of a, I, I see the difference of the control and the true avoidant. That that absolutely makes sense. I mean, yeah. it's kind of, there's a little bit of a blend. Yeah, there is. But I think mine's more control <laughs> and less, I know who I am. I know what I want. I'm it, okay yeah. on my own. And, and it may just be more a fear of the intensity and how great it's going. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that would scare a love avoidant too, by the way. So just saying. And you know, you know me, I hate labels. I really don't like labels. I really, really don't. But they guide us. So whether it is you, if you identify like with love avoidant, love addicts, you know, control person with control or <laughs> AKA control freak, which I've got too, for God's sake. Yeah. We know I am too. Oh, yeah. I own it. I'm owning it right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, no matter what it is, 
the key is awareness, like awareness of not the label, but awareness that, wait a minute, I'm putting a wall up or wait a minute, I think I'm I'm really worried about being too vulnerable and losing myself. And so I'm going to, I'm putting a wall up. I'm feeling myself pull away or wait a minute. I'm in fantasy. He didn't wait. What, what did this person say? So for the love addict, it's like, we go into fantasy. The person might do one little thing, like bring us over home. Like, let's say they, they pop over and say hello and bring us a coffee. Then we go into this fantasy and, and, and interpret that as, oh my gosh, I think that they want to see me every day or I think that they want to marry me or I think they want to be with me forever or is this more extreme fantasy of little gestures that that person might do when they start dating, it blows up in the mind of a love addict. So what we want to do even with that is be very aware and notice what we're doing, step into, first of all, what we're feeling, emotionally speaking, like, hold on, what's going on? What am I feeling? And then what's true in this moment? Like, let me break down. Let me not go into story and assumption and fantasy. I got to get out of that. What happened? Okay. He brought me a coffee and drop the meaning because with a love addict, we go into putting so much meaning around when people do something. So, okay, he brought me coffee. Okay. Period. Versus he brought me a coffee and it must mean he wants to bring me a coffee every single day or maybe he wants to see me tonight too or maybe this or maybe that or maybe this. It's like, nope, just brought me a coffee. That's the fact and sit in that and don't reach for anything else. So again, it goes back to awareness and the way that we remain aware is to stay connected to ourselves and to what we're feeling emotionally and to our fact and truth, which is all living in the adult chair. Brilliant questions. No. You got some good ones today. It, that was I. I think it that hits home with awareness. Mm-hmm. I mean, more than anything, it's just being aware. I love it. The being aware, the slowing down, living in fact, not blowing it up. Whether it goes towards the story of oh my gosh, this is going to be an incredible marriage, or the opposite way of oh my gosh, why is he trying to get so close? Mm-hmm. Like it's just living in that moment, in the present, in the facts. And just being aware. And that's, I think that is going to help me tremendously not want to run for the hills. <laughs> I'm so glad you're not running for the hills. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it really is awareness. And when we are losing our awareness, I just want to remind everybody, it means you've slipped out of the adult chair. <laughs> you've fallen. Mm-hmm. And it's like, get back up, brush yourself off, sit back down in the adult chair where things are slow, We do not make up story and assumption. We live in fact and truth, but it's slow. So if you're not aware, it's because you're moving too fast. Your brain's moving too fast. You're making up too many stories and assumptions. So slow, do some deep belly breaths. Oh yeah. Yeah, the belly breath is not such a good one. You put your hand on your belly, take some very slow, deep breaths, slow it down. When we slow down, we're able to catch things that we cannot see when we're moving too fast. Think about it. When you're driving down the street at 100 miles an hour, you're not going to see things next to you, right? Because you're going so fast. Mm. If you don't, if you go really slow, you catch every little detail when you're driving on the road. Same thing with life. We've got to slow down to catch everything, and we become aware when we're slower. Right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, gosh, Jackie, thank you, my friend. I love my time with you. This was helpful. Thank you because. These are really great points about dating. So I hope this was helpful for everyone. It was. Thank you. I'm so excited to start dating now. We look forward to the updates (laughs) with this man. Oh, I have one more point. It's really important when you're talking about like, well, I've got a list of like what's really important to me and (laughs) And what's not. Let's come back to that list, the your controlling list. No, I'm just kidding. You're going to tell me to burn it. (laughs) No. I think it's important though, again, because you are like, you, you would like to find a lifelong partner. You would like to get married, right? Mm-hmm. But there's some non negotiables, right? Mm, yeah. And I think there are some things probably on your list that are, you could be flexible on. <laughs> That's the difference between preferences and expectations. So just remember what are your expectations or your non negotiables? You've got to know what those are up front. And then, and again, you know what though, as I say that, when you start dating this person, it may morph a little bit. It may morph. So we want to say, okay, this is, these are my preferences in this relationship. 
They're just preferences. This is what I would prefer. Right? I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I don't have to have someone 6'2", six 6'3". Six I know. You do say that. You do say that. <laughs> they need to be at least six something, right? But what if you meet that really awesome guy that's like 5'5"? Five five? I mean, you're not exactly very tall, I hate to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to intend that person is going to come. Okay. But yeah, well, that's so true. That I think that's very very true and I like that. You know, I I do see it could morph. That's so true because if it's the right person, it could if you let go. <laughs> oh my goodness. It could. Yeah. It really is about living in the flow state. Mm-hmm. But again, have preferences versus expectations and let them go. Now, again, not to say there are some non-negotiables, like I'm living near my family, no matter what, I cannot move. But the more you date him, that might even change. So you just don't know. Go with the flow. I know. There I think it is. I'm going to have to go revisit that month in the membership. Oh, which one? The living in the flow. Oh, yes. That was a good one. Because it's hard when, you lo- when you're a one and you love to have control. Yeah. I think just something something about that month and, and every time I listen to that, that teaching that you did, the podcast that you did with living in the flow, it just, it, I, I hear something different every single time. So maybe, mm. maybe I need to revisit that for this. I think that'd be a good <laughs> idea. I think that was what we did in the membership in December or something yeah, or November. I, think so. I don't remember. Anyway, all right. All right, you guys, that's it. I, I'm saying goodbye this time for real, Jackie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being open and vulnerable. Yeah, of course. Look at you. Anytime. You're getting so vulnerable on us. I love it. All right, you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, that's all I got for you today. I will see you seated right here next week in the adult chair. <laughs>